Hey, what's up, guys? Airsoft Man 819 back again with yet another airsoft gun review. I'm really excited for uh, the summer of 2015 because I've got an entire string of airsoft reviews I'm going to be doing. It seems endless. Um, I'm definitely going to live up to my name this year. So, um, this gun was kind of a spur of the moment purchase for me. Um, I've been kind of looking for one of these, but uh, never really aggressively sought one out. And I just happened to be at Walmart one day and found it. Um, this is the Game Face GFM 311. Um, you guys probably already know what this is, really. This is a, a 1911. Um, but it's not just any 1911. This is actually a full metal copy of the UHC 1911. The UHC 1911 has been in production since, uh, I think, 03 or 04, something like that. So it's been in production for well over 10 years. And it's uh, been a very popular spring pistol in the airsoft community ever since. Um, basically, the UHC and technically this gun um, are copies of the original Tokyo Marui 1911 spring, um, which was made in Japan. Uh, the, the Tokyo Marui really isn't that easy to get a hold of, so most people just settle for the UHC. The UHC has always been well known as a good performer, uh, good quality gun, and it's been known to be extremely affordable for uh, the said quality that you get. But, it's all plastic. What this gun here is, is actually an all-metal copy of the Tokyo Marui 1911, so it shares the same parts as the Tokyo Marui and the UHC counterparts. Um, there's actually some parts that aren't interchangeable between the two, which is something that I ran into, because basically what I did was I bought this gun, um, and the internals of it were not quite up to... Uh, my standards, so I decided to take some old UHC parts that I had and kind of upgrade it a little bit. Um, everything that goes into the slide fit pretty well. Um, the piston, nozzle, outer barrel, inner barrel, um, that whole assembly fit, pr fit pretty well. Um, I tried to put a UHC slide lock in it because this slide lock here is a bit uh, loose. Uh, that didn't fit. Um, also, mag releases aren't compatible. There's just a few small parts that aren't interchangeable between the UHC and this gun. And this gun um, exists in a few different versions. I've seen this metal 1911 in a few different uh, configurations. Um, right now, the only two I know about is this one and the uh, UTG braided one, which looks a bit different. It has a commander type hammer and has uh, false wood grips. Um, but I honestly think they're probably just the same gun. I might get a hold of the UTG someday uh, to do a review on, so... But anyways, this is a really high quality gun. It's probably one of the best looking and best feeling spring guns on the market. So let's bring the camera back and uh, take a look at this thing. Okay guys, so let's take a look um, at this 1911. So, uh, being a full metal copy of the UHC 1911, being full metal makes the gun look and feel much better than its plastic counterparts. Um, even though the performance of this gun might not be as good, it sure as hell feels better and looks better. Um, it's got a nice heft to it being all metal, and um, all of the parts make nice metallic clank noises, which you would come to expect from a metal gun. And uh, yes, it is actually really satisfying to cock the hammer on this. Just makes a nice metallic sound. The safety is nice and positive. The dovetail makes, makes a nice metallic clank when you push it in. The trigger makes a nice metallic clank. Uh, overall, the gun feels and operates very nice. Um, has just plain black plastic grips, nothing fancy there. Um, the trademarks on it, there really isn't any. It just has a giant warning on the side of the slide, which is pretty ugly. On the other side, it has a little Game Face logo there. And over here, it says GFM311 Cal 6mm BB. And you have a serial number that's painted on the bottom of the trigger guard. Now, being all metal and being a spring gun, they construct... The constructed this gun a little bit differently than they would um, the regular UHC 1911 style gun. Um, instead of being all one piece, the gun is actually just two metallic halves screwed together, as you can see by the giant seam line going down the top of the slide. Um, it does take away from the look of the gun a little bit, especially that giant seam line going down the front sight. It is a little bit unsightly. No pun intended. You can see the screw holes right here and here. The frame is the same, it's also screwed together, it's all just two halves of metal 
screwed together, which I don't mind. If it was plastic, I might have a beef with it, but uh, since it's metal, um, it's not going to break or anything, and really the only thing the seam lines do is just make it a little bit more ugly. But from the side, it looks really nice. Um, it feels nice. Um, everything works as it should. All of the functions are exactly the same as the UHC 1911. Uh, which means it's really well replicated from the real steel. You have a thumb safety right here. Um, when the gun's cocked and you turn on the thumb safety, you cannot pull the trigger or retract the slide. Um, it's a very secure safety. Um, when you turn it off, obviously you can fire. Um, when the safety's on and the hammer is down, you cannot retract the hammer, pull back the slide, or pull the trigger. Completely locks up the gun. Uh, but like the real 1911, there's also a second safety in the back of the grip here. This is a dovetail safety, and the gun will not fire unless this is pushed in. You can see the safety is off, and I'm pulling the trigger without depressing the dovetail, and you can see the gun does not go off. You can see as soon as I push this in, it will. So uh, very nicely replicated from the real steel. Um, you have a magazine release button, which is right here, same place it would be on the real one. Um, and it also is metal like the rest of the gun. You just press it and your magazine comes out. Um, this is a part that kind of differs from the uh, Tokyo Marui and UHC 1911s. Um, this is a reservoir type magazine, and I have a love-hate relationship with these. Um, they're commonly used on cheaper guns, and um, they're, they give you kind of an advantage and kind of a disadvantage. They give you the advantage of carrying more ammo per magazine, um, but when you reload them, people can hear you from a mile away because you have to shake it. So basically what you do is, the reservoir in the back holds 50 rounds. You just pull this door down and uh, fill in your 50 rounds. And you close that up, and you have a front portion here. And the front portion only holds about 12. And what you do there is, is you pull the spring down. You can either lock it back or just hold it. And the BBs will come out of a hole right here when you shake it. And when the front portion is full, you just let go of the spring, and it'll compress the BBs and load them into the gun. And every time your front portion gets empty, you have to pull this spring down and shake it again. And uh, that's nice because, like I said, you can carry 50 or 60 rounds per magazine. But when you're reloading it, you're making a really loud shaking noise. And if there are people nearby that don't know your position, obviously when they hear BB shaking around, then they will know your position. I don't, I don't particularly like this magazine. It's really lightweight and it just feels cheap. I would recommend buying some UHC 1911 magazines, which are weighted and they're a lot higher quality and they also do not use this same design. The uh, UHC magazines actually don't have a spring here at all. You just push the BBs in one at a time and it holds 20, um, which is all you really need. You can buy a couple extra ones, but I'd recommend buying some UHC magazines to replace this crappy one with, which is probably what I'm going to do. Uh, but this one feeds just fine. It works just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It just feels cheap and um, the function of it isn't all that great because you have to shake it to reload it. So, um, has your basic 1911 um, iron sights. They're not uh, dotted or anything like that. They're just regular black on black sights. And uh, like I said, that big split down the middle of the uh, front sight is a bit distracting. Uh, but the sights work as they should, and it's just a spring pistol, so it's not like you're going to be sniping people with it anyways. The slide lock is non-functional on this gun. Um, because it's actually used for disassembly, it's not used for locking the slide. Uh, the gun does have an open ejection port. Um, you just pull the slide back and cock the spring, and when the slide is loose, you can pull back the slide and see inside the gun right here. If I can let the camera focus a little bit on that. Come on, focus, focus, focus. I have to focus it manually. There we go. So uh, it's nice that, there's, that that's there because you can kind of look down in there and see if there's any BBs left in the chamber, which is kind of nice, and it gives it that realistic look. Um, there's a little trick you can do to actually get the slide to stay back, um, which is pretty nice. Basically what you do is you just pull it to the disassembly notch and push it from the other side right here. It'll hold the slide open for like maintenance and things like that. It doesn't always work, but you can kind of fiddle with it and get it to stay open like that. Um, so to disassemble this gun, I'm sure some of you are wanting to know, uh, make sure that the gun is fully cocked when you do this. Fully retract the uh, takedown position to the end of the slide lock lever just like this and then you push the slide lock lever from the other side pull it out like that keep the slide all the way to the back and keep a firm grip on it because basically what you're doing is uncompressing the spring so you pull the trigger gently let the slide down and the spring uncompressed you can see the outer barrel sticks out kind of far like that and you might think you broke it but that's actually how you disassemble it and you just give the slide a little push from the back and it comes right off and uh, you can do all the maintenance that you need to do on the inside. So, 
Not too hard of a disassembly procedure as long as you know what you're doing. Typically you should eject the magazine. I didn't do it, but uh, it's something you should probably do just for safety reasons. So to put it together, it's about the same, just kind of reversed. You line the uh, slide back on its rail, slide it back, and instead of decocking it, you actually cock the gun. Actually, you don't have to cock it. Okay, I kind of messed it up here. So make sure the gun's uncocked when you first put the slide back on. And you just take your hands and retract it back until you can see through the disassembly hole just like that. And put the slide lock about halfway in. And then fully cock the gun. And now you can just push it back in and your gun's fully reassembled. Um, there's other ways to disassemble it, but I found the way that I just did right there is probably the easiest. Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy and uh, works fairly well. Um, so we're going to talk about the accuracy of this gun, which is actually the biggest problem I had with it. Out of the box, it shot like shit. Um, I was using Elite Force .2 gram BBs, which are what you would what I would recommend for a spring gun like this. And most spring guns like this are tuned in for two point two gram BBs. This gun, the BBs would come out about twenty feet and then just curve straight up into the air. Uh, so the accuracy on it was terrible. Um, the consistency on it was terrible. And uh, yeah, I very well could have just gotten a lemon, and uh, this gun might be fine. Um, as long as it's not messed up like this one was. Um, I very well could have got a lemon, or they all could be like this. I have no idea. This is the only one I own. I really can't speak for the rest of them. But this one, out of the box, was extremely inaccurate. Um, and the internal uh, parts of this gun are kind of cheap. They're not bad. They're just obviously lower quality than the UHC 1911 or even the Tokyo Marui. Um, so basically what I did, I actually had some internal parts lying around. Uh, from the UHC 1911, so I actually just used the outer barrel, inner barrel, uh, spring, piston, and nozzle. All those parts um, in this gun are actually made by UHC. I took the old ones out, uh, but the factory one should work just fine. And uh, as far as the velocity is concerned, um, this gun is probably shooting between, I don't know, 180 and 200 feet per second with .2 gram ammunition, uh, which is really all you would expect from a pistol like this, especially coming from China. Um, I don't think it's a bad gun, as long as you're willing to fill around with it a little bit to get it to work right. Um, and overall, I would recommend it just for the fact that it's an all-metal spring 1911, and uh, that's pretty awesome in and of itself. Uh, so if you're willing to put a little bit of work into the gun and uh, to fiddle around with it to get it accurate, if your gun is inaccurate, I'm not saying all, my, all the guns like this are going to be inaccurate, I'm just saying mine was, so there's a good possibility yours might be. Um, because the quality control in China isn't as good as Taiwan or other places. So I hope you guys enjoyed the review on the Full Metal uh, Game Face Spring 1911, and uh, I'll see you guys later.